in a conversation about his rise to success and Donald Trump. Good thing for U.S.-China relations or not so much. Talk Asia, Thursday on CNN. CNN's ongoing Freedom Project takes you to Brazil today. A government task force is trying to shut down ranches where people are forced to work for extremely low pay, often in slave-like conditions. Shasta Darlington joins us now from Rio with more on this government effort and some incredible examples of hardship. Hi Shasta, thanks so much for joining us here on the show. What did you see? What did people tell you? Robin, I, I think it's interesting. When a lot of people think about Brazil, they, they think about those juicy all-you-can-eat steak restaurants. We've probably all been to them. What they don't know is the kind of extreme worker exploitation that's going on on some of those cattle ranch ranches. They're in remote areas. It, it's a real wild west. That anything goes. Uh, so we wanted to ride along with some of the people trying to make a difference in the region. Barreling down on their target, an eight-car convoy speeds along the back roads of Brazil's cattle country, only recently carved out of the vast Amazon rainforest. This, one of just four mobile units cracking down on labor exploitation across the country. We've got 25 kilometers ahead of a pretty rough dirt road. Uh, we're looking for this ranch after they got tips. On this day, they get sent in different directions, but the info is old. Workers have moved on, and they come up empty-handed. Andre Wagner, in charge of this latest operation in northern Tocantins state, says exploitation is ingrained in Brazil's lawless agricultural frontier. You'll see someone working in degrading conditions, with an exhausting work schedule, eating one meal a day, while they don't receive any form of salary or very small salary because their food and tools are discounted. Days like this make it all worthwhile. Today, we are leaving to inspect a complaint we received 15 days ago. It's very recent, so there is a very high chance that we will still find the conditions described in the complaint. In fact, the task force finds something that shocks even veteran inspectors. A family of seven workers who say they haven't received any money for two years living literally like animals. Maria Dalva shows us the hammocks slung in the corral where workers sleep and the outdoor spigot where they bathe. This is the bathroom where we wash clothes, she tells me. In the bushes is where we relieve ourselves. Maria Dalva does the cooking and cleaning for workers on the ranch, sharing a shack with her husband and toddler son. Nobody deserves this. This mud? Only rats can sleep in a place like this. I can't sleep with all the noise the rats make. Marcelo Gonzalez Campos, one of the labor ministry inspectors on the team, interviews workers. This is one of the worst cases I've seen. I've been an inspector for almost 20 years and this is really one of the worst. Luis Cardoso da Silva, or Seu Luis, is the patriarch of the family. He says they had to buy their own tools, and instead of paying salaries, he says the ranch owner paid them in food and accused them of owing him money. We always have hope that it'll get better, we'll have a better life, but it just gets worse. And then the point comes that you can't leave because you owe money for the food he's given you. You have debt. He tells me he was afraid. He could do anything to us. He's a mean guy. The ranch owner is nowhere to be found and doesn't answer his phone. 
That makes it hard for the task force to negotiate an immediate payout. For them, the work is just beginning. They log hours of interviews and investigate assets. Evidence used to pressure for financial compensation, which they say often ends up at about $2,000. But when the case is strong, it can be 10 times that. More than 50,000 workers have been rescued from what Brazil defines as slave-like conditions since the mobile units were created in 1995. Seu Luis now among them. But today, Wagner isn't completely satisfied. It's possible Mr. Luis won't return to these working conditions, but it's also possible he will. Given his age and his limited professional qualifications, he will continue to be a potential victim of slave labor. Seu Luis and his family pack up the few valuable items they can claim after two years of grinding work on the ranch and head to an uncertain freedom back in the town they started in. We saw so many contradictions here, Robin. On the one hand, people are being rescued from these slave-like conditions, but on the other hand, uh, as we saw, so many of them aren't prepared to really look for better jobs. They are uneducated, they can't read and write, and uh, even the people, the inspectors in the task force worry that though they are aware of their rights, they are aware that they are being exploited, they continue to be vulnerable, and in many cases do end up falling into the same trap over and over again, Robin. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about an uncertain freedom. I mean, powerful words in, in their own. So tell us more about your report. So you're also gonna come on and, and give us uh, the second installment of that story tomorrow. Just give us a taste of it and, and why this is just so important. Well, Robin, it was that ride-along that really inspired the second story. Uh, when we saw the conditions that this family was living in, not only were they not getting paid, uh, they didn't have a bathroom, they were working seven days a week, it really drove home how serious the problem is and raised a lot of questions. We wanted to know what was going to happen to them, and we felt like we had to find out. When I left there, my heart opened up. It was a pleasure to get back to my house with my family. So many things have changed. A house that Seu Luis, nearly 70, rents in town for his youngest children, paid for with his government pension. We also wanted to find out if they were going to locate the ranch owner. This is one of the biggest obstacles. If they don't find uh, the employer on the premises, sometimes they, they never track them down at all. And in those cases, the compensation is minimal. Uh, it's just a few minimum salaries. Uh, so it's very important to see where that goes uh, and to see what kind of an impact it has on the employers in the region going forward. So these are some of the issues we wanted to uh, keep uh, to follow up on, and, and you'll see them in the coming days. Robin. Yeah, thanks so much to you and your team, Shasta, and we'll talk tomorrow. We'll still ahead here at the International Desk. It's a major week for President Trump, the big deadlines and potentially big fights he's facing. That's all coming up. Stay with us. In 2011, we at Edof planted a seed with the aim of creating an ever-expanding forest. We nurtured that seed and helped it grow. Inspired by the ethics of giving, our seed grew into a strong tree. Branches emerged with similar aims of compassion, humanitarianism, and love. We spread our seeds to help even more people, as blessed is the influence of one true loving human soul on another. In Syria, our aim is to provide relief to 12 million in need, 3.8 million refugees, about half of whom are children. We use our reach to raise awareness of the 30 million slaves in the world today, of the thousands of children trafficked through Europe and the US. We continue to grow into cutting edge medical research. Our mission, make a difference to people's health, save lives and support NGOs that plant more seeds.
CNN World Rugby. It's the Sevens World Series for both men and women. We've got the numbers and the